Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. This is Think Design Stories. In this series, we will be going behind the scenes on one of the most iconic laptop brands ever conceived and is still going strong. Tom Hardy's career is a distinguished one. Tom spent over 22 years with IBM as an industrial designer, design center manager, and corporate IBM design program director. During that time, he worked on various projects from advanced single-user computers to development of the IBM personal computer. One of his advanced projects was an industrial design model of IBM SCAMP, considered by PC Magazine to be the world's first personal computer prototype. Tom was the corporate IBM design program director during development of the very first ThinkPad, Model 700C, and collaborated with IBM industrial design consultant Richard Sapper. After IBM, Tom founded the consultancy Verbal Visual Framework and worked with several key brands such as Coca-Cola, Ford, Lenovo, Lowe's Maytag, Microsoft, Polaroid, Porsche, Procter & Gamble, Samsung, Tupperware, Verizon, and Xerox. Tom's work has been cited in numerous books and publications, including Times Magazine's Top 50 Most Influential Gadgets of All Time, and has won international awards for product design over the years. Currently, Tom is a professor and graduate coordinator of design management at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Black computers are now essentially the norm, but it wasn't always this way. Pebble gray, or beige, used to be the color of choice, especially for early PCs. One of the reasons for this had to do with color requirements in certain countries for computer hardware, and this nearly changed the course and the color of ThinkPad as we know it. Tom tells the story of how the color black was defended against some sizable odds. A second color, a color story, which has probably never been told before. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a insight into something that happened in IBM Germany with, with regards to black. So back in the, uh, gosh, it goes back to the late 70s, uh, IBM, uh, excuse me, Germany, uh, government, the German government has DIN standards, D-I-N. I don't remember exactly what that stood for, but that was basically the, uh, the uh, abbreviation they used for standards for products, all sorts of standards, the DIN standards. And uh, usually when Germany came out with a DIN standard, other companies in Europe followed them, you know, uh, particularly if they had to do with easy use. And so in the uh, late 70s, uh, the labor unions in Germany knew that computers were starting to come, were going to be coming into the, uh, the workplace. They had already started. And this was right before the PC business happened. And uh, they, they commissioned some research <clears throat> that looked at ergonomics in a workplace. You know, how do you, how do you set your, your chair? Do you have a foot rest? Where do you put your, your, your arm positions? The thicknesses of keyboards, the, the luminous reflectance in terms of glare, specular reflectance, glare, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> because in, uh, in Germany and most of Europe, as I remember, the uh, labor unions were in the office, not just in factories, as a matter of fact, or, or trucking. <clears throat> For example, they were in the office, uh, white collar, and they they had the decision-making power jointly with the company as to which computers could be bought and brought into that company because they represented the employees, not corporate. Uh, it, you know, and that's, that's happened some 
you know, in, in this country, but it's still not as it's not as prevalent in this country. It never has been as, as it was in Europe. And again, when in Germany, not only in Germany, but in the rest of Europe, that was sort of the mode of operation back then. So uh, the uh, the unions were supporting these DIN standards, and one of the DIN standards said that it gave specifications on what they call luminance reflectance, which was the <clears throat> basically the value that you see in your visual field. So, for example. If you were, they, they argued that if you were looking at a white document, piece of paper, just had data typed on it, and you're having, you're having to take that data and key it in to the screen on the machine, then you might be looking at a white piece of paper and eventually looking around the screen going back and forth like this. And so anything in the visual field, they argued, needed to be a certain luminous reflectance value, which is taking white on one screen and like a gray. So it's muted, no black at all. They, I can't remember the range right now, but it was basically from a white to a light gray, more of a warm gray color. So black was verboten to be on any kind of desktop machine. That doesn't mean you couldn't have a box, a computer box sitting over the corner plugged into the wall that's cranking out stuff. That could be black, but not in the visual field of the youth. So <clears throat> that's why, going back to the early PCs, everything was off white or gray. I mean, I, I had some mock ups of the first person of computer that I, where I had Mary Meco Fabric, which is a, a finish from Finland are very contemporary popular fabric and color in different patterns. Uh, I even wrap, I wrap my mock, some of my mock-ups of the processor with it, where it would be, it would, if it was manufactured, it would be painted that way. It's an option because it was, it was user-friendly, if you will, right? It had a very emotional side to it. You, would, you could have a neutral and a basic side for a business machine, but if you wanted to do something playful, you should do that. Well. That got killed on that product because of cost. Uh, but <clears throat> um, we had we had some people inside IBM, some of the human factors experts, who said, you know, they don't they didn't think that that the test that the research folks did in Germany was really valid. Um, and they had some they had some reasons for that, and but Germany made it a DIN standard and they marched with it, and uh, IBM couldn't sell any products in Germany that didn't meet that standard. And at, at that point, I think maybe fifty percent of IBM's total revenue came from the other side of the Atlantic. So that was going to cut if they couldn't sell <coughs> excuse me products. Uh, in that part of the world, and it was going to hurt. So, as a design program, we had to basically mute all of our stuff. You know, that you know, fit within that visual field. So, as, as time went on, uh, there were more people that were voicing opinions about this luminous reflectance thing, but it really wasn't. True. Somebody made a, I don't remember the whole argument, but it was something that ended up by saying, if, if you follow that, you, you couldn't see stars at night, something like that. I mean, I, but so I decided <clears throat> to uh, fund an independent research project from a, a famous Swiss ergonomist, uh, Grand Jean. Uh, to independently look at the DIN standard, do research, and, and really tell us, is it right or not? And I said, I'm not, and I, I, we paid him, I did. I paid him um, to do that. And I said, IBM's funding this, but it's for the industry. And we're not saying, we're not trying to stack the deck and tell you what we wanted one way or the other. Just tell us what's true. 
So he came back and basically said, it's not fair. And this was a guy that Germany respected. And the, 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 all, the, all the people in that field in the world respected this gentleman. So I took, I took that report and I sent copies to all the computer companies, all the major computer companies, including Germany. I sent it, I sent it to Apple, to HP, to Compaq, to Sun, back then, uh, in German, Siemens, next door. Anyway, all the big computer companies, I sent that report. And the idea was to start to surround the German band standards and all these other companies would start lobbying because they had people that would, that would interface with the government on things like this. <coughs> and so meanwhile, that, that thing was at play that was going on. At the same time that the ThinkPad was going to be coming out in black. Now, the United States had no rules on that. The United States really didn't follow the German Benstein was like other companies excuse me, other countries in Europe did, like Sweden and Norway and so forth. And the Scandinavian companies were very big on ergonomics. Uh, and same as still are. Uh, but the United States, you could basically do what you wanted to do. Except companies that had to sell products in Europe, if you wanted the same, for cost reasons, if you wanted the same color on everything, where you didn't have to have a special color for one country, which is going to cost a lot more money then by default, you follow the standards because that was worst case scenario. So we decided to use the ThinkPad as a vehicle to push block, no matter what was going on with the dense standard. Because we had that report from this, this expert in Switzerland, a neutral and well-respected person. Uh, and so, uh, IBM Germany, uh, of course, wouldn't accept the black machine uh, because they had to follow the good stuff. No matter what anybody said, otherwise, expert or not, outside expert or not, the good standard was on the books. That's the law. Talk, talk, we have to follow it. We're going to do it, you know. If it changes, we'll change it. But if it's, if it's in the books, they had to follow it. And, and we knew that. So we gave Germany the alternate color of a gray, a light gray thing that met the, the value of the, the DIN standards. And we said, this is what's going to cost you. Because everywhere else, it's going to be black. Well, Germany came unglued because the cost was going to be prohibitive, and they said we can't, we can't accept black. You know, I mean, excuse me, we can't accept gray because it's going to cost too much. But we also don't want it to be to be black. So it's well, <laughs> one or the other. One meets the DIN standards, and one doesn't. So if you're so strong about meeting the DIN standards, you pay for it. Of course, the product, the product development people who would have to pay for it, they were kind of arguing. They started arguing with the safety guys because there was there was some public information started coming out about this German DIN standard test being a little flaky with response with, with, in, in respect to uh, the uh, the lumens reflectance issue. So. I, I made a trip to IBM Germany to go through this with, you know, with those guys. I took the report. I was going to talk to them more about it. And while I was there, I wanted to make a presentation to uh, the president of IBM Germany. At that point, his name was Hans Olaf Hinkle. He was a big proponent of design. Uh, of, the most powerful IBM executive in Germany. And so, you know, I tried to do that across the corporation whenever you were 
at a location where there was an executive like that, particularly one who would, could help you as a friend of design. To set up, to set up a meeting and, and give them a personal presentation of products that, that are going on across IBM that they may not have anything to do with, but you want to show it to them because it, it gives them some insight into what design's doing and where's, what's happening across the company. So I had some advanced products that were going on somewhere else that he, I thought he would find interesting. So I set up a meeting with him. So I go into his office and I couldn't believe my eyes. His desktop computer, it, you know, it was a, a CRT and he had a processor box and a keyboard. It's painted black. I could not. I could not believe that. And I said, Hansa, oh, God, this is great looking machine. It's black. He said, yeah, I love black. I had, the, I had my guys paint it black. And I didn't say anything about the safety guys or the banner. I didn't bring anything up like that. I just put that in my pocket because I was going to pull that out with the safety guys later. And I couldn't believe how lucky I was to have had that meeting and see that product sitting there was black. So we got through with our meeting and then I had later that day, I think I had the safety. So I go on to those guys and we talk about the Ranjan research thing and they said, well, we see, we know he's, you know, this guy is famous and, but we got the gym standards and we have to adhere to all that. It's for the safety of German customers. That's why they do this stuff. And I said, well, look, what you're telling me that the DIN standards are making it safer for people's visual system because their computers aren't black. I said, is that right? Don't you know they don't have they go outside the box? If they go outside the box and then there's reflectance, there's going to be some kind of visual issue. He said, yeah. And I said, don't you have some responsibility for IBM employees that would work in an environment like that? If they have black machines, and they said, well, "We don't do that. We, we don't have machines that don't meet the VIN standards." And so then I pulled this out of my pocket and said, "Have you ever been in President Hinkle's office?" And they said, "No, we don't get it. We don't get there. That they don't. These guys didn't go to the CEO or the president. I'm sorry, the president of IBM Germany." I said, well, you should go up there sometime because he's got a black desktop PC. So if you're so responsible for your employees, then wouldn't you say you're running the visual system of the IBM president, a president of IBM Germany, by letting him have a black machine? Well, uh, uh, yeah, they couldn't say anything for that. And it was a beautiful moment. Uh, and so I said, look, the bottom line of this is we're doing the black think pad worldwide. If you don't want it, you can do the gray. It's going to cost more, but that's that's IBM Germany's decision to make. So we gave you design gave you two colors, one that meets the VIN standards, and then the black one we're selling everywhere else that they don't care about the VIN standards. And they said, well, we know that the product people don't want that and blah blah blah, but they said, we'll, we'll go talk to the product managers and try to get them to get the gray one that meets against study and argue with them about cost. Okay, that's what they did. So they went and they, the guys wouldn't pay them money. So what they, their solution was, on the cover of the operating room, of the first IBM ThinkPad 700C that was sold in IBM Germany, it was printed, not for office use. Because only in the office where the unions were would you enforce that instant. It was like unbelievable. That was unbelievable. You know, and I, I can't remember, maybe it was several months or maybe it was a year after all that, they 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 took the that standard out of the uh, of the books in Germany. It was shown finally 
a lot of people tell them that this is wrong. I don't know, maybe, maybe some people try to sue them. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened exactly. But we got the word that it's no longer required. So then, like, ink pads went everywhere. You know, but no problem. But printing not for officers is, is just like <laughs> unbelievable. unbelievable. So I don't think I've ever told that story before. That's, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much for sharing that. Like I, I heard rumors because there is a museum in Germany, very, very small one mm -hmm. that has one of the beige think pads. Um, and they do mention something along the lines of, uh, this one was available in very, very small quantities, but the, uh, the information as to why and how and, mm. um, you know, all of the, uh, the history and I don't know if the right word is politics behind it. Don't, don't use in the office. That's like, don't write well, written on the side of a pen. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know that people use it in the office. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, maybe they had some strict union guys and went right by the gym standards, but, you know, they're, uh, I would say probably the majority of the people, and particularly people in small offices, or if you have it at your house, you don't care yeah. about or that. Maybe they just said, oh, this, this isn't the black, it's dark brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, do you, do you have a pocket uh, colorometer? Do you know <laughs> yeah. this is actually black? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That is incredible. <laughs>